thank you guys so much for joining us for this exclusive conversation in reaction to the volatility that we've been seeing in the crypto market these last past couple of days. Robert Kiyosaki, thank you so much for joining us. We have so much to cover and everybody looks to you in times like this. So tell us what you're seeing right now. Yeah, well, if you're looking to me, you're in trouble. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I'm honored uh, and especially when I talk to the younger people who like especially the millennials, which are in charge of millennial money. And the reason for that is, although you guys have got a lot of <clears throat> real education yet to go, at least you're more aware of what's going on in the world, you know, due to YouTube and the, the internet and all this stuff, you're, you're much more aware than my generation. Mm -hmm. So the baby boom generation uh, was 1946 to I think 1974 or something like that, whatever it was. But the baby boom generation had it really easy. And that's the problem. And so in it, when it comes to real education, it's like, you know, you spent, so the boomers have spent all their lives learning how to use their right hand. And now they know something is changing, but they can't change. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying, I'm going from my right hand, I'm gonna to have to learn how to eat with my left hand now. And so what happens is the brain gets kind of locked into a mode. And then you have to kind of relearn everything again because learning is really physical. It's not just mental like they have in school. So like if I wanted to learn, <clears throat> let's, I'm, I'm fourth generation Japanese and I don't speak Japanese at all. Man, you know, cause I spent 74 years speaking English. If I have to learn to speak Japanese, I'm in big trouble because I'll be dead before. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I flunked out of Japanese, I flunked English, I, French, I flunked French and I flunked Spanish. So my chances of surviving in Japanese are none. But anyway, it's the same as education. So you millennials have a bigger, a better chance because at least you're aware that something is messed up. And the boomers had it really easy and they're in serious trouble right now because as most people know, except the boomers, social security is broke, Medicare is broke, and their pensions are broke. And uh, without financial education in our schools, <clears throat> guys like my age are in serious trouble. But anyway, the reason I'm gonna talk about Bitcoin today is I'm very optimistic on Bitcoin. I own Bitcoin. I'm gonna buy more Bitcoin but I'm gonna say horrible things about it. So if you can't take it, you shouldn't listen to this program. <laughs> but I will explain why I like Bitcoin. I like, I also have Ethereum. I have no Doge coins and all those other things. To me, that's, um, uh, that's different. That's a mania. So does it make sense to you? I mean, it's, it's, people don't know what they're doing. They're speculating. Yeah, no, they, and I think that's what's going on. There's a lot of information, like you said in the past, like prior, um, boomers rely on their retirement. These millennials rely on information, but they're receiving, I, I believe, the wrong kind of information. Correct. And so that's why um, I think today's interview is extremely important because you can tell us exactly what, what kind of future you see for Bitcoin as opposed to all this fake news we're hearing. Well, it's, it's, it is fake news because, you know, they said, well, the reason Bitcoin crashes is because China said, they didn't like Bitcoin or something like that. And, and Elon Musk didn't like Bitcoin. That's not the problem. You see, China has not liked Bitcoin forever. You know, in 2013, they said, don't buy Bitcoin. 2014, they said, don't buy Bitcoin. 2015, they said, don't buy Bitcoin. And 2016, I think they said, don't buy Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So when the press comes out and says, the reason Bitcoin crashed is because China tra tra trashed it. Well, that's, they've always trashed it. Yeah. That's not the reason it's crashing. <laughs> and and um, from what we were discussing earlier and what I've been reading, I mean, this has been an issue since like 2019 as well, where they weren't even accepting it. And they just came out and said it again. And now it's all hot news, apparently. And so people yeah. are dumping their Bitcoin. And, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I, and for those of you are tuning in, if uh, you hate Trump and you like Bitcoin, you'll probably hate me after this. But anyway, I'm going to tell you what I know. I'm, I don't want to swing either way. Um, it's like I said, there's a lot of fake news out there. So I love Bitcoin. I almost bought it. I think it was 2017 when I was at 20,000, but, uh, I didn't. And I, I'm going to say this much here. Okay. This is real financial education, what they don't teach you at school. 
So there's three kinds of people in the world when it comes to money. There's an investor, a trader, and a speculator. I am an investor. So the moment I started buying Bitcoin, I wasn't a trader. A trader is somebody's gonna buy it and sell it. A trader, like in real estate, is kind of a, a flipper. They buy a house to flip it. That's what traders do. And a speculator is a gambler. And I would say most people who are chasing Doge coins and all this other stuff and Bitcoin, and they're speculators. They're all kind of gamblers hoping it'll go up. That's not what I do. So we at Rich Dad teach us, we don't say one is right or wrong. We're just saying there's three different types of investors. So I, I am an investor. I understand trading. That's what Andy Tanner and all those guys teach is how you, you can make money going up and make money coming down. It makes no difference. So when Bitcoin crashed, I made more money. You see, and the guys who are losing money right now is because you're not a trader, you're a speculator. So don't say, oh, you hate Bitcoin. No, I think you're stupid. That's what I'm saying, but it doesn't mean I hate Bitcoin. Okay, so don't be a speculator because those are gamblers out there. And real financial education should include why Bitcoin and gold and silver are going up and down. And one is because in 1944, there was a thing called the Bretton Woods Agreement. America had basically won World War II against the Japanese and the Germans and the Italians. So in 1944 at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, the US government promised we will back the US dollar with gold. But as you know, the US lies a lot. <laughs> so everybody in the world says, okay, we'll accept the dollar because it's as good as gold. So I wasn't born yet. And 1971 is when a man named President Nixon broke the promise and the dollar came off the gold standard and it became debt. So the reason we have all this volatility with the Fed and the Treasury and Bitcoin and Dogecoin and all that is because of what happened here. So in 1971, you know, the reason your father and I traveled the world teaching financial education is because this changed all the rules here. Mm -hmm. So what happened in 19, well, actually in 1964, I started buying silver. I was 16 or 17 years old. And in 1972, I started buying gold at $35 an ounce. But in 1971, it was illegal for Americans to own gold. And I was a pilot in Vietnam flying for the US Marine Corps. And I thought it was really strange that it was illegal for an American to own gold. Mm -hmm. So I began, sus began became suspicious of the Federal Reserve Bank and the Treasury. So when I meet most Bitcoin investors, they don't trust the Fed and the Treasury either. They don't trust Biden. They don't especially like Kamala and they don't trust Nancy. You know, Bitcoin guys and girl, women are rebels. Mm -hmm. And Rich Dad is a rebel brand. That's why I don't say go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt and invest for the long term in the stock market. I don't do any of that because I don't have to. Mm -hmm. I don't, I have taken three companies public, you know, I started the business, took it public and all that. Once I understood how the stock market works, I wanted nothing to do with it. So as you know, Alexandra and our company, we don't have a 401k. And we don't, you know, we don't tell you what to do after that, but we, we, did, we don't recommend you save money either. Because mm -hmm. why would you save money? Because after 1971, the Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank, which is not a bank, it's not federal, it's not really, there's no money in it. And the US Treasury, can print money. Mm -hmm. so savers are losers. And that's what, and the school teachers <laughs> are still telling people to save money. So all you Bitcoin people out there, this is what I do. I save gold, I save silver, I save Bitcoin, Ethereum, and bullets. <laughs> <laughs> what I find extremely interesting while you're talking right now is because you know, you get excited when things like this happen. And while other people are panicking over this Bitcoin crash, you're like, hey, it's on sale. This is an opportunity. And I think that's the key. It's the, the lack of financial education that we're seeing during a time like this, where it can really, I mean, take a downturn in someone's, in someone's financial status if they weren't prepared for something like this. 
And so I think the beauty of where you were saying this is something long-term, it's not just to trade and speculate. That's the key right now. And so many people are missing out on this. But um, something I, I'm also realizing while you talk is, okay, so their, their attempt to gain power and regulate this and the economy really just adds value to the Bitcoin, just like it did for gold and silver, right? Yeah, uh, let, me, let me finish this because I'm gonna go macro. Yeah. You know, as I said, Bitcoin guys, they're, you know, what's this big? <laughs> Their minds are that small. I was just in Cancun, Mexico, and there was several Bitcoin millionaires in there. And they're all trying to get me to buy more Bitcoin. I said, why? It's high. You know, that like, that's like me buying Apple stock. It's too high. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I want to wait till it crashes. So anyway, the thing, the, pop, the reason I want to do this is because so many of those young guys out there about your age, they're Bitcoin millionaires. But as the market started to crash, they became afraid. And the reason for that is because they got rich being speculators. They got lucky. You know, they just happened to buy 10,000 Bitcoin at a dollar each, and now they're multimillionaires. But as it comes down, and the reason they're afraid is if Bitcoin goes to zero, which it possibly could, I'm not saying it will, they're wiped out. And so what we teach at Rich Dad is how you, you know, I've lost, I've made it and lost it, I've made it and lost it. But that was, that's how you really learn. And the reason school teachers are poor is because they tell you not to make mistakes. I've made so many stupid mistakes. I mean, your father and I have, you know, if you look up stupid people, we're probably at the top of the list. <laughs> But we keep bouncing back. And that's really what entrepreneurship is. But our school system teach you to be employees. So anyway, let me go on the big picture again. So this was rich dad, poor dad. This is financial education, how to be a capitalist. You have to have income. It's an income statement and income statement. This is a balance sheet. There's another thing called a statement of cash flow. <clears throat> and that's why in 19, I forget when it was now, we created the cash flow board game. This is a capitalist tool to teach you how to think like a capitalist. And if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that's all this book was. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a book on the most boring subject on planet Earth, accounting. So when I was nine years old, my Rich Dad started teaching me this playing Monopoly. So what Kim and I created this board game here because Monopoly doesn't have a financial statement in it. And so that's made this game so powerful. It's a capitalist tool. And that's why school teachers hate it because they want you to be employees like them. Go to school, get a job, save money, pay your taxes and get out of debt and invest in a retirement plan. I don't do any of that. I refuse to. And most Bitcoin guys have the same bad attitude I have. <laughs> But the problem is they're afraid of losing now because they don't know how to make it back. And that's why I said it here that they think too small. So when you look at this, this is how big it is. It's infinite, okay? So we go here. Okay, let me show you this, what, what happened. So in 1971, I was in Viet on my way to Vietnam here. And gold at the time was $35 an ounce. It was illegal for Americans to own gold in 1971. See, Bitcoin and gold are in the same family. The reason I buy Bitcoin is the same reason I buy gold and silver. I don't save dollars. Why would I save something they can print? It doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So 1971, gold was $35. Silver was about $1.90 or two bucks. And then what happened is by 1974, 1974, President Gerald Ford made it legal for Americans to own gold. Up until that time, I was smuggling it in. I was a criminal bringing gold into the country. I was buying it in Hong Kong and sneaking it into the States. So I was a smuggler. But Gerald Ford changed that and it jumped to 100 bucks. So my $35 went up three times, let's say. And then by 1978, uh, it was now 300. So the same thing was, so when I saw Bitcoin rising, I saw the same thing going on, except not as volatile. I mean, Bitcoin is much more volatile than gold, but this was the high point here 
is around 1980, gold hit 650 an ounce. But there was a two day spike when it went to 850. And all the idiots jumped in. Ah, gold's going up, gold's going up. And I watched all these guys who thought I was an idiot back here for buying it at 35. They jump in here and the same thing just happened. It drops in 2000. This is uh, 1980 when Reagan was in office. So it drops in 2000 to $312 an ounce. I don't know what silver was doing. I was still buying silver. I, just, I wasn't paying much. It was about three bucks or so, 10 bucks. I don't remember. But I backed up the truck here. Mm -hmm. I was buying gold at about 350 a coin. I thought I died and went to heaven. And then what happened is 2008 came and the great reset hit and gold for the first time hit a thousand. So it took from 1980, you know, 20 something years to get to a thousand. Mm -hmm. So I was doing really, really well because I don't save dollars, I was saving gold and silver coins, eagles. And then what happened in 2011, it hit 1895 an ounce. And then it dropped to uh, today, it's around 1873. So that's real markets. So Bitcoin goes up, Bitcoin goes down and all that stuff. It's not any different than gold. It's just more volatile because you guys are more tech savvy and you can, you can, you know, Reddit and GameStop and all that stuff. And you got trying to corner the silver market. As I said, you guys are more sophisticated. You need to have more aware, but you don't have the experience yet. So keep going, but you'll get that experience. So my friends who are laughing at me here aren't laughing today. You know, they're saying, well, how do I get gold? Today, you can't even buy gold. I don't know if you know that. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I was just at my gold dealer and the U.S. Mint, the price of gold is going up, but their sales are going down because by law, they cannot sell gold. So what I'm saying is it's all manipulated. You know, it's 100% manipulated. What happened in 1980 was the Hunt brothers from Texas tried to corner the gold market by manipulating silver. So silver hit $50 an ounce in 1980. Today it's around $27, but you can't buy any. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what's going on. So, it's, so just as you guys know, on the big picture, it's all manipulated, which is why you've got to be smarter. Any comments on that? No, Robert, thank you so much for sharing that chart because even for me, it, it just provided so much clarity on the trends that we've seen in the past with gold, silver, and now kind of similar what we potentially could be seeing with Bitcoin. Um, and so it really provides clarity when you were talking about your story of your friends laughing when you when you bought it at such a low price. And now here they are trying to get their hands on it at an, at an extreme high price. Um, and, it, and the other day I read this um, quote that said, you know, you see all these retail stores filling up when something's on sale, but yet, no, one, no one's willing to invest when something's on, on a discount, like Bitcoin or gold or silver. Um, so it really shows you where the state of financial education is in our country. And Robert, it goes to show too that since these school teachers have these beliefs and they end up teaching our generation, it shows that why people are panicking right now because they were never taught this kind of alternative right. perspective. And so like you showed with the example of gold, the more the government tries regulating something, the more powerful it becomes, yeah. which, I, which is what inevitably we'll see in the future. You're getting it, so it's manipulated. So let me tell you how bad it is. So look at this here, okay? This is today, gold is 1873 approximately, that was yesterday. But this is the US Mint in silver eagles, which is my favorite coin. Even though the demand is through the roof, sales are down by 75%. Gold eagles, which is my second favorite coin, I have lots of them, by the way, 
sales are down by 41%. So how can sales be down when demand is up? How's that even possible? And then these are, the, they're called buffaloes or they're blanks. Buffalo, you know, it's like Indian head nickel or Indian you know, buffalo dime, whatever it is. It's down by 67%. That was yesterday. So it's 100% manipulated. It's just like when the Biden administration comes out and says China is going to ban Bitcoin. Well, they've been banning it since 73, I mean, uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, this is the next thing is on the macro. I'm not in, see, guys in Bitcoin are thinking this big. It's the smallest part of the market. Mm -hmm. There's more opportunity if you think like an entrepreneur. Do you know? I mean, there is so much opportunity. So anyway, is why I don't save money is because in 1971, the dollar became debt and taxes. See, what, what, uh, 1944, the dollar was backed by gold. In 1971, because we were buying so much stuff from Japan and Germany and all that, they started to cash in the gold. They started saying, we don't want the dollars, we want the gold. Mm -hmm. So Nixon had to change the, the take the dollar off the gold standard in 71 when I was just about to go to Vietnam. And they changed it to debt, IOU plus taxes. So the reason, so that affected my thinking when I was about your age, I'm going, I was about 25 years old and going, and my poor dad kept saying, go back to school, get your master's, get your PhD. And I said, I'd wind up just like you, dad. I'd be a school teacher who's broke. He didn't like that answer. And so around 1974, I followed my rich dad's footsteps. But, you know. but anyway, so <clears throat> this is for real. These are assets here. A, the biggest market are called derivatives. Derivatives are fake assets. Like an ETF is a derivative. A stock is a derivative. It's a massive market. You know, that they now have some kind of Bitcoin derivative and all that, but it's a tiny market. The next big market of bonds, huge market, that's debt, huge market for bonds. And then this comes stocks, huge market for stocks. And these guys are worried about crypto. You know, going, hey, there's more opportunity all over this place. And then there's businesses, the richest guys on earth own businesses. That's why Elon Musk is a billionaire. That's why Bezos is a billionaire. They didn't get it, you know, climbing the corporate ladder. They made the corporate ladder. And that's kind of entrepreneurs I'm talking about. And that's what we got Rich Dad teach people to do. Then there's real estate. And the reason I have so much real estate is because real estate will give me as much debt as I want. And the more debt I use to buy real estate, same as your dad, we don't pay any taxes. So Trump uses debt and he doesn't pay any taxes. You know what I mean? But the Clinton said that Trump was a crook. And she says, but you don't pay any taxes. And Trump, this is in 2015 or 2016, he says, so when Hillary Clinton said to Trump during the presidential debate, but you don't pay any taxes. And he says, that means I'm smart. And the socialists, all the school teachers, they hate him. But they don't know how to make millions and pay no taxes. And Alexandra, you know, at, Real, at, at Rich Ted, I'm always talking about how much tax I don't pay <laughs> because I think I'm smart too. So that's real macro financial education. Meanwhile, the crypto guys down here are worried about Bitcoin going up and down. They're more afraid that if it goes to zero, they don't know how to come back mm -hmm. because they don't have this picture here. So then there's real estate and then commodities. The biggest commodity of all, as you know, is oil. Next is food. I've made fortunes in oil. You know why? Because I got tax breaks. If I invest a million dollars in oil, I get a million dollar tax break. And that's what Biden wants to take away. And then there's food. You know, if you really want to get rich, just grow apples and you can sell your apples. I mean, you don't have to be that smart just plant apples or cabbages or kale. <laughs> and you can make fortunes in water. I mean, that yesterday, you know, that was a discussion we had yeah. was the, the water deal I was looking at investing in. And my friend brought a, 
a friend of mine brought Fiji water to market. He made a fortune, mm -hmm. you know? So you can make a fortune in water. You can make a fortune in gold because I've started gold mines. I started a gold mine in China the Chinese took it. That's why I'm not blaming the Chinese people. I just don't like communists. Mm -hmm. okay. And then there's silver. I started a silver mine in, in Argentina, plata as they say in Spanish. And then there's crypto. So I think I was cracking up about when I was in Cancun last week and all these multimillionaire crypto guys, we just got lucky because there were they were speculating. And now that it's crashing, you know, they're they're getting afraid because they don't know how to make it back. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that with the right financial education, it's infinite. And so when, China, when, the, when I was listening to the news, oh, China says they banned Bitcoin, I'm going, no, they didn't. <laughs> they ban it every year. What China did ban, this is the most important thing. They allow the little guy to own Bitcoin or crypto but the institutions cannot own Bitcoin. That's the most important point I want you to understand. It's institutions don't own Bitcoin. Like the central bank doesn't own Bitcoin because Bitcoin goes against the central bank. So that's why it's the Fed, the European central bank, the Japanese central bank, the British Central Bank of England, they don't like crypto. That's important to understand. So they're gonna do exactly as they did here. They're gonna try and manipulate the crypto market. So it's gonna go up and down. They have to. So to think that crypto will always go up, you're dreaming. That's what I'm saying. The good thing about the millennials, you're more aware, but you lack experience and you're getting bad information. And that's why Rich Dad was form. I don't say buy crypto or buy gold or start a business. I mean, just be aware. It's so many ways you can get rich today. Yeah. And Robert, that's one thing I truly value what you just said. Um, like we have so much access to, to so much information, but sometimes we choose the wrong outlets. And then, well, yeah, and we follow the wrong teachers. And so I think it's really a case for following the right teachers and finding an opportunity. Because right now you mentioned simple things like oil, gas, bullets, gold, Bitcoin, Food, apples, and kale a, salad. Yeah, that's a capitalist Whiting. mindset. But most of us have like a consumer mindset. And, and one thing I realized while you were talking, I kind of had like an aha moment. Every one of these essential needs that that we need to survive and, and just a way to gain power for ourselves as an individual. Once the government starts catching on, they start fearing and that they're gonna lose this control over the individual, right? And so they find any way to tie it back to the government, which is exactly what's happening right now. And it reflects in the prices and demand of these, of these options that we have. So that's what I support young people like you doing is, you know, Bitcoin is important, it's gonna crash. I think if it goes to 27,000 a coin, I'm gonna back up the truck, I'm gonna buy more. Yeah, that's what I love, Robert. It's having the capitalist mindset. It's using the stimulus check to your advantage and investing in your financial education and not letting anyone control you. You yeah. are in control of your financial future. Yeah, I don't need money. The moment you don't need money, you're a free human being. But that's why they don't teach you anything about money in school, then you become a school teacher, like my poor dad. Good man, very, very good man, smart guy terrified of making mistakes, Ter thinking capitals are all crooks. And that's what they're teaching kids today. Thank you, Robert. This is a genuine case for all millennials and all generations to get financial education because if they knew what they were doing, this could very much be an opportunity. Thank you. Keep Thank going, you. keep learning. <laughs> Thank you.